store, but you know they have people that walk around the house. You know, and this is one guy. Are you, well, I hope you get it if you want it. I'm sure we already have some list and only have five here so far tonight. We got a few looks like you're gonna have class, Ruby.
Stuart, you've had a rough week, haven't you? Can't even sit on the same bench as him. No, I'm sorry. It's more room. It hasn't been so rough. I was trying to get a little more room. Spread out. It is 6 o'clock, just beep 6. Already seems very late. It's dark here and uh, a little rain. and picking up quite a bit, actually. It's good to have each one here. We just passed nine people. It's good to have our visitors with us. April and Abby Henderson from Seattle, Washington. That's Stuart and Franklin's daughter and Stuart and Franklin. Stuart and Sharon Franklin's <laughs> daughter and granddaughter. I speak in contractions. And so it's good to have them here with us this evening. Uh, Vicki McDaniel texted that she's listening. She wasn't feeling too good. Of course, you know, she doesn't have... Uh, she's had an inner ear trouble and really doesn't have an inner ear and terrible balance. She can't hardly drive at night and in the rain. Windshield wipers make her very dizzy. So she didn't get out tonight and wasn't feeling good. Taylor said he and Shirley are listening. Andrew said they're all listening tonight. His mom had an abrupt spell of atrophib right as we were about to leave and still is in it, so keep her in prayer. And Aaron is listening, and I know Mom is listening, and Jerry. So we have more online tonight than we do here. But glad that each one is listening. That is. Ruby will be gone next week. She leaves out for, sir, say, Seattle, but not quite that far. Minneapolis uh, on Monday. Uh, check. They, they were calling the, the lows Monday and Tuesday. Her nights there are 8 degrees both nights and highs in the 20s. They've raised the lows to 9 and 10, <laughs> but uh, still in the 20s, not above freezing the whole time, but she never has to be outside except walk to a shuttle bus, and it's almost inside. It pulls into an area, so she won't be outside. So I'm sure she'll be listening next week. There's not a congregation that's close and easy to get to, and no transportation without taking a taxi or Uber or Lyft or something, and honestly, that's not too safe anymore at times. So Ruby will be listening next week. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Ruby, remind me. Uh, ladies Bible class tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Central, 6 Pacific. That's how they say it on TV when things came on for our West Coast friends here. Uh, it'll be on Facebook Messenger. Ruby will just... She's got a group set up, and we'll hit, and then she calls the people, and you just answer, and uh, just, uh, she'll, you know, just interact. Usually that's about an hour, and sometimes it goes a little longer, so I look forward to it starting. Even though I don't hear it, I know you all are having it, and so I always enjoy providing the tech support. I can hear if Ruby says, Marty, come here a second. I know something's up, but hopefully we got everything going and looking forward tomorrow night. I got mom set up a much better situation. I set up her just quickly. I've got a MacBook Air I'm not really using for anything. It's older, uh, 10 years old or so. And I've got it set up for her. That's how she's listening tonight. But when Ruby calls, I from uh, my Mac can answer that one for mom. She can hear and I can turn on the microphone. If mom wants to make a comment, I can just click a button, turn on her mic and turn it off. And so I can have total control to help mom much easier interact with the class. So anyway, thanks Ruby for reminding me of that. Let's uh, start out with a good uplifting song, number seven. Number seven. <clears throat> All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord. Chosen seed of Israel's race, he ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him Lord. Tribe on this 
terrestrial bowl. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall, we'll join the everlasting song and praise him, Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and praise him, Lord of all. Before our prayer, let's sing number 322. I, uh, I was going to wait till Sunday to announce this, but I think everybody here needs to know. No, I'm not leaving. Uh, but, uh, Sir Stewart, I'm sure Larry will remember. You remember, because everybody here needs to know, uh, you remember used to be the old D.C. clothing factories and D.C. overalls and all that? Yes. And, uh, well, the guy who started that company died in 1944, starting Gamalia, and he set up a trust. And they made it irrevocable a few years later. Had $25,000, I think, in it. Well, as of today, it's worth $35 million. And I got a letter from a law office in Nashville. I think it's a law firm. I, I knew it was coming due to Sherry Edwards had seen a news report about it. And uh, he died, and it was his wishes that that trust, whatever it's worth, when his last heir died, which just did, be divided equally among all churches of Christ and Tennessee and Kentucky. And there's, they estimated for 2,000, each congregation will get 17,500. And so I've already heard from the law office. I had to go to the bank today, have papers notarized and lie detector. No, it wasn't that. It was very easy. But I did have to get things notarized that I was a member here, I mean, minister here and various things. And, and the bank was most helpful with me getting this taken care of. I didn't mention it yet, but uh, I was, his name was Comer, it was his first oars in Gamaliel, which is in Monroe County. But as his wishes of his wealth be left to every church of Christ in Kentucky and Tennessee, and that's quite a chunk of change, $35 million now. But he died in '44, and it is now coming to fruition. So we should be receiving fifteen to 20000 if everything goes through, and they, quote, approve us, you know. So I just wanted to tell everybody, I'll mention it again later, uh, that's twice we've been helped with big chunks. The uh, congregation in Magnolia, when they closed their doors, they split the uh, treasury and uh, gave us half of it, which was about $7,500 at the time. And there was a congregation just out of Magnolia. So anyway, I just want to tell everybody that. I, I may show you a picture of him, just a really uh, classic-looking gentleman, almost handlebar mustache, and started the D.C. overalls and all that. And... and uh, you uh, had to be a congregation that didn't have a cappella music. I mean, they had a cappella music only, no instruments, before you could get the money. And that's one thing I had to have notarized. So I just wanted to tell everybody, we may or may not get anything, but I've already responded. They sent it certified mail, and I sent it certified back. And I didn't want to mention it until at least we got the letter and stuff. And so it is official. We've done everything we can now. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that to everybody. I... Uh, I don't know if I have a picture of him or not. Uh, did they? Should have been to every congregation in Kentucky. So they got it too at Oak Hill. Uh, what's his name? G. W. Comer, and. Uh, so I'm glad you said that. There he is. That's it right there. That was the picture they sent. It had a write-up of him. And uh, so but he died in 44. Here we are. Mom did the math quick. She said, that's been 75 years. So 75 years later, his trust. And they made it irrevocable where it had to be done. 
And so, you know, in a few years later, it, it could not be changed. So, anyway, I just wanted to share that with everybody. Let's sing one more song, and, and uh, we'll have, uh, let's have Stuart to lead us in prayer, since he doesn't get to be here a lot on Wednesday evening. Number 322. In thy field I would wield sickles brave and true. In the fight for the right I would dare and do. Spend my days in thy prayer all the journey through. Let me live close to thee each day. Let me live, Let me live close to thee. God. Me, all the long the way. Let me live close to close to thee. Let me walk and talk with walk thee close to thee each day. Not the crown nor enough that the world might see. I would work, never shirk. Blessed Lord, for thee. But to know where I go, that my soul is free, let me live close to thee each day. Let me let me live close to thee. Take my heart to me off of the love of the way. Let me let me live. Help me bear and to share some poor pilgrim's love. Be my friend to the end of the toilsome road. I would sing to my King in the souls above. Let me live close to thee each day. as we assemble this evening for the warm and dry place that we have to come together. We thank you for the fellowship and the enjoyment that we can take from being with each other, those of like mind. Father, we're thankful for the rain especially. We're grateful for the mechanism that we see in nature, the way that you've designed this world to work for us, that we can see your hand behind the way that nature works. It gives us faith and it allows us to see a glimpse of how you've created us and created everything around us. Father, we're thankful this evening for your word. We pray as we study from Isaiah that you would help us to hold this book in reverence, to learn from it, help us to gain as we study from your word. May our knowledge and also our wisdom increase over time. Father, we are human. We sin. We come up short sometimes of what you would expect of us. And we pray that you would forgive us of those things as we repent of them. Help us to always be looking to do better in the future than what we've done in the past. Help us to avoid the wide path and to follow the narrow path. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Sing a couple more songs. Number 243. Then we'll have our Bible class for the evening. A couple of texts. Brianna said she, Lillian, and Violet are listening. I'll be asking Violet what we went over. 
And so, of course, don't forget for the latecomers, tomorrow night's ladies Bible class. Aaron said she could really hear them sing. It sounds so beautiful when she commented. That's a lot of congregations for Brother Coomer's trust to help, and it really is. Number 243. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I number 74 is just a one verse song and I usually uh, sing sometimes more uh, less softer songs I'll say right before the lesson but Isaiah is such a book about Christ and the church coming you'll see tonight about the church thought this would be a good uh, song and Aaron's talking about how pretty the singing sound it does sound good with you know since we still have wooden floors and benches and and uh, block walls it really makes it almost like a sound chamber and it sounds really good Let's sing number 74, and of course, note the markings where it has the P's above the line. The more P's, you're supposed to get softer, and MF means a little louder. That's not the official term, but uh, so we'll try to do the markings and get a little softer, because it really adds a lot to the song. Number 74. <clears throat> Christ, we do all adore Thee. And we do praise Thee forever, Christ, we do all adore Thee, and we do praise Thee forever, for on the holy cross hast Thou did a great job. I didn't do so well. I had it pitched a little high and I was, well, Ruby said what? <laughs> All right, let's have our classes. Abby, you want to go to class? Go to class. You want to stay out she can go to her books the Bible for you if you'll work with her. She can do them all. Did you hear that, Abby? Like Ruby can go through the books of the Bible for you. 
Oh, you're talking the other way. Oh, I'm sorry. You meant she could say them for Ruby, not Ruby for her. Stuart didn't even crack a smile. He meant. Well, that's good, Abby. That's nothing better to know than the books of the Bible. And then, as you get older, what contains in those books? All right, we're on Isaiah chapter 2 tonight. Stuart, I will comment before I forget. I'm really glad that you mentioned about Oak Hill also getting the same because you want to make sure something like that is legitimate. But even if it wasn't, there's nothing they can do. They don't have any account information or anything. All they do is your address to send you a check. <laughs> that's all they need, you know. And that's what the bank today, when I got it notarized, wanted to make sure they had, didn't have access to any account. And they do not. They just, just wanted to know that we're still here and existing as a congregation of the church. Well, I filled out papers. We got a stack of papers, so I don't have to fill out one sheet. And Adam? Did we, did we just get, I'm, I'm, I'm a little lost. Did we get, just get hit with the scam or something? No. Okay. Uh, you said something about me getting your account information. I was just curious. No, no scamming at all. I mentioned it at the beginning. I'll fill you in afterwards. Okay. And... Uh, <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get started on Isaiah chapter 2. And Stuart, it was also reported in, you know, publicly in Christian Chronicle. That's why I knew it was very legitimate. Adam, I'll give you more details later. But basically, I remember the church died in 44 and he left $35 million to every church of Christ in Kentucky and Tennessee. I mean, it's worth that today. And that's what it basically was. And, but, Stuart, I don't think it was really a grant. We just, I don't know, maybe more we have to do later. But I just had to fill out one sheet of the church. If I was a minister or elder here, get it notarized and send it back to them. So, had they done that and then have to do more? I don't know. So, don't know just had to be back in by November 20th. So, Anyway, let's go ahead and I'm not saying I couldn't be hit by a scam, but I'm the world's, if Ruby calls me and tells me something financial, I'll check her ID. <laughs> I don't quite, but I have my guard up so much. I guess it's because of doing so much computer stuff and writing for computer stuff that uh, I really, really, you know, try bend over backwards. You have to be super careful. Everybody's out there to try to cheat at least for a few years then they'll stop Isaiah chapter 2 we'll go over the questions here but Adam I'll give, I'll give more details I start to say Sunday maybe some pictures and information uh, alright Sherry Crabtree's not here let's go through these Adam number 1 uh, verse 2 and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the, in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Number two, Sharon. Verse 30. Many people shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. And we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So the next one that's a lady that's not here. April, do you want to be that lady? Do you mean? All right. All right, number three. Jordan is a girl that attends periodically. So you're Jordan right now. Okay, number four. Reviews in class. Larry? Uh, verse 10. Enter into the flock and hide thee in the dust. For fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. All right, number five. Chris. Whoops. Verse 12. Or no, I'm sorry. Verse 11. 
the lock, <coughs> the lofty looks of a man shall be humble and Okay, number six. Well, I was going backwards, I thought. All right, Stuart. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought low. Okay, number seven. It's me, it's verse 19. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty when He ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Number eight, Kathy. Okay, you see, everybody back in, because that's everybody. So it shuffles them. Let's see who, we just have two more. Number, Larry. Uh, <coughs> number nine, verse uh, 21. Go into the cliffs of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty when He arrives to shake care of the earth. And number 10, Kathy. Okay, we've only got uh, 22 verses in this chapter. Shouldn't take terribly long, but we we'll always like to go to a quarter till. I mean, I try to quit by quarter till. Of course, we uh, last week started a study of Isaiah. Isaiah is 66 chapters long. It's why it's called the Little Bible, because the 66 books of the Bible and 66 chapters of Isaiah and so much of it is about Jesus. Uh, but here, of course, we know Isaiah was during the time, you see the kings, of course, Hezekiah was one of them. Uh, he was during the time of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. So sometime during these times is whenever he was get Adam. Oh, um, I was mentioning kind of going along with the Bible there. I think I, I've heard, uh, I know like Isaiah, um, um, it's one book, but there's like two different like there's a point where kind of the tone changes in the book, Am I, like midway through. I'm not familiar with what you're talking about, but no doubt I'm sure you know it. It does. I mean, when you get you know toward the 50s, for sure, so much about Christ. Yeah. And uh, but Adam was talking about how that the tone sort of changes, almost split like old New Testaments. I'm sure, but I appreciate you saying that. That's a good point to make. But let's go ahead and look at this. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So Judah is the southern kingdom. Jerusalem probably at this point was analogous to the northern kingdom. Judah tended to be far more righteous than the northern kingdom of Israel. They didn't have any kings that were considered good. And it's interesting that was considered the righteous side Judah was because that's, Judah is from whence Christ came. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Well, these are the last days now. It's been ever since, you know, the cross. Well, the Pentecost, I guess we would say. Uh, we are in the last times. Uh, Peter wrote, he says, these last times. Uh, we also see, he wrote again, last days. Uh, the writer of Hebrews says, talking about God has spoken to us in these last days. Already by the time Peter was writing his epistles and Hebrews was written, they referred to it as the last days because it was the last era of time, religiously speaking. Like you had the patriarchal age, the mosaic age, and at the cross, it switches to the Christian age, and that was it. There's nothing else to come, so we're in the last days. And it shall come to pass in the last days, and I have no doubt that this refers to the day of Pentecost and the establishment of the church, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. We could spend the entire time talking about this verse. Obviously, the last days, because there is not another 
era or epoch, if you will, of time to come, but the mountain of the Lord's house, no doubt referring to the church, but be established in the top of the mountains. Jerusalem was on a hill and everything pretty well came up toward it, the way it's situated. But obviously, metaphorically speaking, it shall be exalted above the hills. The church was going to be above every other establishment. Uh, the church. And we're not talking about just names. You know, people often say things like, I hear people ask me, are you Church of Christ or, or something? I'm just a member of the church that's in the Bible. And, you know, Church of Christ is one of the names that was used, but we're not a denomination. Each congregation stands alone. We don't have a headquarters somewhere else like Southern Baptist Convention does and things like that. Uh, we have no connection to any other congregation. And in Revelation seven times, those churches were just referred to as the church at Laodicea or wherever. We could be just the church at Mumfordville, and that would be a fitting name. And, but we use Church of Christ to try to avoid confusion with others. And the Church of God is referred to, the Church of Christ, just a church. Even Acts many times refers to this way. And, you know, I don't think we should have the way. I like having the name of Christ. But the church is not a denomination. All it is, uh, the word church is the Greek word ekklesia, which means the called out, the called out of the world. It's everybody who has left the world and obeyed the Lord. That is the church. That's it. And so it's not a denomination where that you have like a headquarters and hierarchy and boards of directors and the such like. And it's just the baptized believers is it. But it's going to be established in the top of the mountains. It'll be exalted above the hills. And this imagery here, I really like. And all nations shall flow unto it. I picture like waters, but what's the water doing here? Flowing, but what way? Uphill. uphill. It is flowing uphill, which water does not. But with the church and people obeying, we're flowing into it, but we're flowing uphill to get to the top. And so I think that's interesting that the Lord is even going above nature for the people to flow into it, the church. Any comments on this verse? It's a very rich verse. So it'll come from all nations, not just Judah or Israel, but all nations. Nations they had not even heard of. They could not even imagine this side of the world at this point. They could not. I'm sure some were already settled here. Uh, you know, even where I went to college at Freed Hardeman, there were Indian mounds that artifacts date back to the 190s. And so, you know, they had to get inland a long time, you know, it took a while, and so they were here a long time before that. But all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. I like the way Isaiah almost extends an invitation, if you will come. And that reminds me so much of Isaiah 55. Ho, everyone that thirsteth. I like the way I, <laughs> that's the verse that uh, Ruby, we were listening to Bible readings. And it just said, I, I guess it's just we must have stopped and heard it louder. It just said, ho. She said, does that verse start out with ho or that chapter? Of course, she knows the Bible very well, but it did just sort of jump out at us. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And talks about buying without money and and milk without price. And here he says early, he's inviting people to come. Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Hindsight makes it easy to understand what he's talking about. He's talking about the church being established at the day of Pentecost. When they asked what must we do to be saved, he told them to repent and be baptized. And as many as were saved were added to the church. And so when you're saved, you're added to the church. Not some group of ma mankind, but to the church. And the Lord added to, th to the church daily such as should. And that would really could have been translated as such as were being saved. So anybody that goes through the process of repentance and baptism that's saved, you're added to the church. No one can keep you out. That's just your part of it. It's like being born physically. 
you're part of that family and it can't be reversed. But I really like all this. Now, we don't have a lot of time, so I won't get too stuck on these. But the Lord will teach us, will walk in his paths, because out of Zion, which is another name for Jerusalem, Zion means parched place. Uh, and uh, probably parched because, no doubt, of their leaving of uh, God's word, they'd become parched. Zion's never mentioned in the New Testament, Z I O N. S I O N is only mentioned once in King James. And New, New, uh, New King James may have the. Have the Z. You might look, Sharon, because I know you use that a lot. But Zion is mentioned uh, in Revelation, I know. Yeah, I may have said one, but it's mentioned a few times in uh, the New Testament. That one was Revelation, I always remember, Revelation 14 1. But Z I O N is never mentioned in the King James. They just said. Zion in the New King James, I wondered. Zechariah, of course, the last time it mentions it in the Old Testament. Verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, go into peace as opposed to warfare. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be war. There's going to be. But people of God will pursue and look toward peace. They find peace within the church is what it is. From the word Adam. I'm also wondering if this verse also seems to point to the day of judgment as well. The end of time, maybe. What, this verse here? Yeah. Well, it could, uh, you know, mean at the end uh, because of no more war and everything. And... Um, but certainly, judgment obviously will be then, and there will not be warfare. And it may well. So many of these verses, I do think, have double meaning, and that's a good way to look at it. Verse 5. We've only got about 8 to 10 minutes. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. I like that imagery. Walk in the light of the Lord. I see the Greek word for light here. It's photos, tie here, due to the part of speech. Uh, but, you know, almost every Greek word changed the ending according to the part of speech. That's why the Greek word for thee, this is it right here. This is also it. But there were 24, and this is also it. 24 different words for thee in Greek. But to walk in the light of the Lord. To walk out of the Lord, there is no light. If you have any comments, feel free to make them. Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob because they be replenished from the east and are soothsayers like Philistines and they please themselves in the children of strangers. They had gone away, but there's a time, he's saying, I'm going to be calling other people and they will be replenished from the east. He's going to replenish his people. One of the most striking phraseologies used within the New Testament to me is when the apostles are referred to as the twelve Multiple times, then after Judas hung himself, they're referred to as what? The eleven. And I've used that to make a point. If people, and no one here has ever done this, and I pray they never would, if someone gets mad and quits church, the church will go on without you. It doesn't change anything. And the eleven, the twelve will become the eleven. And then they're referred to as the twelve again in the book of Acts and Matthias. But he will replenish them from the east. The land, their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. They had great wealth. They had so much, but look what they were doing. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. You'll see a lot about this as Isaiah goes where they, they bow at a stock. I think it's Isaiah. It could be Jeremiah that talks about uh, the stock. Uh, it, it's both of them. Uh, Isaiah talks about falling down to the stock of a tree and Jeremiah says, saying to a stock. <laughs> that almost makes me chuckle. I mean, it, it's because just the irony. These people are saying to a stock, which is a piece of lumber, you're my father. And to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. 
Can you imagine being so disrespectful to your parents that you refer to a rock or stone as your own parents? And that's what they were doing because God had created them, but they were worshiping stones and wood, which their own fingers had made. And the mean man bowed down, and the great man humbled himself. Therefore, forgive him not. Uh, I think just talk, talking about, the, well, the people that are doing sinful things, they bow down in worship, and the, the great man here would be one that w with their wealth, and which wealth is not wrong in and of itself, but how they were using it. They humble themselves. They're going through the motions, but their heart's not there. And you need to hide. This reminds me of Revelation. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. To the people to whom he's writing, they need to enter into the rock. And what that reminds me from the Revelation for the hills to fall uh, upon us. And the rocks. I always look up rocks from Revelation 6. They say to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sat on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. So I think at the establishment of the church, it could be at the end. It probably means both. The Lord's going to be exalted, and men will be brought down. For the day of the Lord of hosts will be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. I think no doubt now he has shifted probably to the to, to the end. Haughty and proud people will be brought down. Ten more verses. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up and upon all the oaks of Bashan. It's interesting. They had been worshiping wood, trees and stocks and the such like. Here he calls them wooden things, cedars and oaks. Uh, one of my, I always think of this because we do have some woods south of our house and uh, that's where I always go to lay all the cats that pass on, take them down to the woods there. But Ezekiel says, prophesy to the forest of the south. And always that phrase always catches my, he said, I told him to turn toward the south and prophesy against the forest of the south and say to the forest of the south. So even then, he was using the imagery of calling them and the mighty people trees. And of course, in, in Ezekiel, he's going to burn them down. The forest of the south. And upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, this continues the thought, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarsus, and upon all pleasant imagery, pictures. It says sloops. In the New King James, beautiful sloops. I'll be honest, I don't know that word in English. S-L-O-O-P. It's a sailing ship. I did not know that word. Uh, you know, I told you Sunday the average person only has 20,000 words they use regular. I'm probably a little short here on some. Sloop is a single-masted ship. Uh, but... He's bringing judgment upon all these things. Mighty trees and ships. Metaphors for people that were powerful but yet sinful. I think of a person when I think of the ships of Tarsus who hired a ship to go to Tarsus. Jonah. You know, hired a ship to uh, go to Tarsus to flee from the presence of the Lord. Jonah 1. The sloops that were known for Uh, he's talking about that uh, Stuart was saying that sloops were known for their beautiful architecture and their graceful lines. And so I'm so far from that, I didn't even know the word. And so I know some words, but I didn't know that one. It says all pleasant pictures and imagery. And, and I, I want to look up the actual Greek word. It's not here for That was used, that they translated sloops. An image, it can be a ship, it can be a craft. Meaning very dubious. Well, I don't feel so bad now. They didn't even know how to translate that word, so they just threw in sloop. <laughs> and, uh, but they're, they're not for sure exactly what this Greek word meant. It can mean pictures, things that were beautiful. And you remember the Israelites were not to make any images of people, 
a fish or fowls or anything like that. And so they had these images that they were worshiping and things that were beautiful. It's still carried into the New Testament. Of course, people, uh, and even today, people go for things of beauty, be it people or things. All right, we've only got a few more verses here, and we're about out of time. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down. I'm going to ask you all a question. Or is it bowed down? I would think bow here. Bow and bow sort of means the same thing. I've got one recording I made of a verse where he, where it says he bows the heaven, or I don't know if he bows the heaven. I think I put bow. I'm not for sure. I, and uh, Psalm, bow thy heavens, O Lord, or is it bow thy heavens? I don't know still. I'll have to go back and see how I recorded it. I think I put bow thy heavens. I may have put bow. I, I don't remember. They both really mean the same thing. You bend a bow or to bow down. So it, things like that make English hard to learn. But the loftiness of man shall be bowed down. I think this is bow here to be humbled. And the haughtiness of man shall be made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, which he said while ago. And he's reminding them they will be brought low in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. I think we know what he's talking about there. Three more verses. Four more. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terribly the earth. And of course, if he... Talk, and you know the church is going to come if he's talking about the end of time like I said in Revelation 14 sickle is mentioned seven times and he's going to you know reap the earth and that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold and it's probably just talking about in the day of quote judgment that's being brought upon people not necessarily the day of judgment but the day of visitation when the Lord brings punishment upon them and that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats. They were making idols of gold and silver to worship a mole and a bat. I went by Jerry's house yesterday. I almost have to. We live next door if I go out. <laughs> so I act like it was a trip. But I saw he had a mole trap set in the yard. And uh, I don't think it was some kind of worship. I see him set out in the yard with a shovel, pick, and various things, ready he, for the... We don't worship these critters like this. We try to get rid of them when they cause problems. But they were worshiping these lower animals. Not to worship any animals. Two more verses. To go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks <coughs> for fear of the Lord and for the, <coughs> and for the glory of His majesty when He ariseth to shake the earth terribly. So He mentions again shaking the earth. Uh, the power that he has that the earth is going to be shaken at this judgment brought. And the last verse tonight. Cease ye from man. It means get away from these kind of people. It says, sever yourselves from such a man whose breath is in his nostrils. For wherein is he to be accounted of? Well, if we sever ourselves from men that breathe, there's no one else. But he's talking about doing like them, but turn to the Lord instead of mankind for salvation. Are there any questions or comments? I went a little over. Marty, that same third and fourth verse are so eloquent, especially the fourth verse. Right. But they're repeated almost identically in uh, Micah. And I wonder why it, it's repeated just almost word for word. Yes, yeah, sometimes they are. Ah. Uh, Micah 4 what? Um, 1 through 5. It's, yeah. It's almost identical. It is. <laughs> why, would they, why would the Bible be written that way? Well, that. talking to different people, and I'll ask April, did your mother or dad ever repeat anything to you? <laughs> Occasionally. Just to drive home a point. Mm -hmm. The church was coming. He didn't want them... And, Stuart, I know you drive on the highways a lot, and you probably see this more than anybody. Whenever you're approaching something, especially change, you'll see multiple signs. You know, stop ahead, speed zone ahead, 500 feet, 200 feet. And I think that's what he's doing. Church ahead, 
200 years, you know, 700 years church ahead, 400 years. But that's a good point. Why would he repeat it verbatim? And nearly. It's to really drive home the point. Uh, I was going to look. Of course, beating your plowshares into show, swords uh, and swords into plowshares, it's the opposite. Isaiah 2, 4 and Micah 4, 3 have them beating swords into plowshares from weapons to agriculture implements. Joel has the opposite. Beat your plowshares into swords. Go from farming implements to pruning hooks. Let the weak say. So he said among the Gentiles, prepare war. So there's times they need to be ready for war and there's times of peace. And so it says sort of the opposite there. I've heard people often quote, beat your swords into plowshares, but also the Bible refers to it the other way as well. But I think with the church coming was the peace that would be brought to mankind. All right, we'll stop there. Let me knock on their door. I'll leave the peep in. There's a political speech. I don't even know what a sloop is. I can't help it. But some politician used that verse to make the point. I don't know who it was. Yeah, he probably been your parents once. No. <laughs> that was state day. That was April. Uh, 2017. <laughs> it must have been a good steak. <laughs> it was the best I've ever had, honestly. I don't know if I was starving to death, but no, it was good. <laughs> I don't think we've done. I don't think we've done a big, big cook like that since. What holds? What, what holds us all back? Showed you they show that restaurant live, they stream on the internet, people doing that. But I can't hardly watch that. I get so hungry I can't stand it. Hey, Marty? Yes. Let me see what you drew here. Just a second, I had to work last night. Oh, yeah, she's drawing. I'm old, I don't know what a sleep is. There's so much wrong with you. know what a sleep is? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not listen to the Beach Boys? <laughs> well, I did, but they talked about roots in that song. What was the name of that song? Was John? Sweet John B. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that Bible. Matt Rainey's. Oh, she drew the Bible lines. Yeah. The Dead Sea. That's, that's very good. She's drawing. That's very good. <coughs> just draw a slip on there, too. Just to <laughs> put the final nail in the coffin. I do remember that song, but Ruby, I never thought about it. It's in the New King James. Actually, the King James says pictures. And New King James says sloops. Totally opposite word. They said they don't know what the Hebrew word was. Turn, if you will, is an invitation song. Let's do number 696. There's a fountain free. And speaking of fountains and flowing, uh, you know, before we get into it, I do now that Ruby mentioned that in that song about sloop. I've heard that many times, but I didn't realize that's what it was. And so out of, I guess, context, I just did not know. I didn't even know in the song it was a ship. That's just 
one that slipped me. The average person only knows 20,000 words, and so that wasn't one of mine. <laughs> now, actually, I read the average person knows 40,000, but only uses about 20,000. But if you will, I always like to use a verse as our invitation. And I want to sing There's a Fountain Free because the fountain of flowing. And it, Ruby will tell you, every time, I probably have quoted Revelation 22.1 maybe 10 times today because I was doing some test recordings on the phone. I was trying different apps. And Revelation 22.1 is one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and I just know it, and I quote it, and then I was testing. But, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. King James says proceeding, but it means flowing. It was. And so... There's so much imagery with the church about flowing water because this was something very valuable to them in such a dry, arid area. And whenever the church was going to be established, it says all nations shall flow unto it. We need to be within that stream and flow into the church. I, I know all the adults here are members of the Lord's body and probably most listening to my voice. You've obeyed the Lord in baptism and your repentance, confession of His name, baptism which washes away your sins and puts you into the church. And Isaiah doesn't let this go. I mean, the, this imagery just at, at this point. It's, we talked about Isaiah 55, talking about coming to the waters. Uh, oh, everyone that thirsts, let him come to the waters. And it is a flow. And so even at the very end in the imagery in heaven, the water is flowing. And right now there's a fountain free. You can be in it. You can be within the church and of this flow that goes up to the top of the hill, which we talk about, it's actually flowing uphill in that verse. And which is against nature, but isn't the church and the people against and different than the world anyway? You know, that's doing the opposite. It's established in the top of the mountains, exalted above hills, and the nations shall flow unto it. They're flowing uphill. We've got to go against the grain. We've got to go against the world if we expect to be saved. If you're here and need to obey in baptism or need to come back to the Lord, let's sing the first verse of 696 as we stand. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh haste to its spring. Tis the fountain of love from the source above. And He bids us all freely drink. Will you come, Will you come to, to the fountain free? Will you come? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis the fountain. Okay, I had quite a few texts during the lesson I didn't get to. Sandy was listening. She's driving home from work. I, I just didn't see these, but that's probably a good thing. Uh, Aaron sent some comments about the lesson. The Hebrew word, I assume you mean for sloop or pictures, uh, is in translated nine entities. The word is a favorite of Isaiah, perhaps because it's identical with the word worthless. I assume you're talking about that word, Aaron, that was translated... Sloop, I'll always have a little painful place there, really. I'm kidding. Of course, about sloop uh, and pictures. Uh, and speak, and uh, <laughs> Jerry sent the great mole hunter he is. And Vicki texts, she really enjoyed the service. She said, wow, on the inheritance, that's fantastic. Of course, it's not guaranteed yet, but I've done all our part, all I know to do. And so, anything else? I'm going to make it our last song. We're right at the top of the hour, and I always like to get within an hour. Don't forget our service is Sunday morning on the Lord's Day uh, at 9 o'clock. Don't forget Bible class for the ladies tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Central Time. Uh, have your iPhone or your phone or tablet or something near you. And uh, make sure you have Facebook Messenger on it, and it should ring you. And uh, maybe Ruby, I'm, I'm just thinking, might call a little early tomorrow night just for the first you know, time to make sure everybody's good to go. Is there anything else? If not, let us say a prayer. Father, we thank this study that we've had this evening. 
We pray it's been spirit and truth that you've been well pleased. And we pray that we always work and put forth the effort to flow uphill to the church, to thy people, and be among them always. And then we can enjoy the fountain flowing forever out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Forgive us of our sins, be with our sick, continue to be with Mom, be with Alice, others, be with Ruby's parents, be with Shirley and uh, Sherry tonight with issues with her heart. We pray that works out. Be with Vicki and any others who may need our prayers. Give us safety as we go home. Give April and Abby safety as they fly back to Seattle and Ruby as she flies to Minneapolis and back next week. Be a steward when he heads out on the road. We know the highways are a dangerous place. More than anything, keep us safe and faithful and save us in heaven. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Adam, How old are you today? 28. 28. Abby, uh, I want to see your picture again. I want to take a picture. Yeah, I want to take. And I should have gotten one of the. Let me get a picture. 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 That shape is cute. It had a little fat on it. Does she dream about that as much? Well? I mean, he probably does. I'm sound sleeper, so I'm sorry. What was that about? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. The guy who started DC. See, we don't want to tell the gentleman over the fence. He's been a lot of factors in the area. Good to see you. He started that years ago. He died in 2024. And he left the trust. And when the last family died, all the money was just taken from the average church price of the time they came. And there was like 30, 35 million. So it worked out to about 70,000. I mean, it comes to pass. I hope our field gets it as well. We better be more of it. Yeah. You got it, Marty? No, I, I mean, I've seen those for I, years. 